Now this is a reach down the back of the sofa. I know that THQ Nordic are in the business of using every IP they can find in the attic, but a 3D action adventure game from 2003 is really a surprise. A pleasant one at that. I'm Jordan from Switchwatch and this is The Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. Before we get into it, if you're new here then consider hitting that subscribe button, I'm confident that you won't regret it, we do reviews and plenty of awesome Nintendo Switch features. Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy follows the two titular protagonists in a magical fantasy infused Egypt. Sphinx is a demigod who is on a mission to solve the ever increasing problems of the world where dark forces are encroaching at a disturbing rate. While searching for the Sword of Osiris, he is pulled into a ritual trying to transform Tutankhamun into a mummy by his older brother who has malevolent motives. As the process is stopped halfway through, our young Tut is left in limbo, half alive, half dead and transported to the evil bad guy's lair. Despite being an undead mummy, he has hope of being returned to normal by collecting his canopic vases, on the way helping to thwart the plans of his older brother. Our two unlikely heroes work together from separate locations to put a stop to the evil. I was incredibly surprised at how immersive the story was here. It's not going to win any awards, but the original developers had a strong vision of a story they wanted to tell, and I think they succeeded very well. It's definitely from another era, and I feel that these days games of a similar nature often neglect the story in favour of other things. If you want a solid, entertaining, fun story then Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy is a good option. The gameplay is of two distinct halves, but when combined together form a very competent 3D Zelda-like game. You'll control both Sphinx and Tut at various intervals as the gameplay switches between the two and their separate locations. Sphinx is far more action orientated with his sword and shield while Tut is all about the puzzles and stealth. Sure they both have their fair share of environmental puzzles to solve, but Tut is completely harmless and is more about sneaking around. With Sphinx travelling around vast landscapes as well as towns, he probably has the more exciting of the two portions. He also gains the most new abilities like a double jump using zip lines and so on. The combat is a little rough if I'm being honest, it's not bad by any means but it feels a little on the weak side, more of a hack and slash vibe with not a whole lot of strategy. There's no lock on system which instantly feels like a loss having played the last 20 years worth of Zelda games. Defending was also hit and miss for me, I felt far more vulnerable than I would have liked. I do appreciate the fact that they've done the age old trick of having a musical strike when you hit an enemy which makes it have a more action feeling to it. With Tut the Mummy, you'll be feeling very isolated, trapped in the bad guy's fortress with the only contact from the outside being Basket, who can somehow teleport between the two locations and with him, useful treasures between Sphinx and Tut that each of them finds. For example, Tut will find the double jump and give it to Sphinx, while in turn he will give Tut an invisibility jewel that will allow him to be even more stealthy. Tut's gameplay portion may turn out to be the least cool of the two, especially with the introductory section being somewhat meandering, but actually I found it to be the most interesting thanks to the ambitious puzzles and ingenuity on show here. I've got to hand it to Eurocom, the original developers, I always thought of them as being a porthouse or a cheap licensed property developer and obviously didn't give them anywhere near enough credit that they deserve. The puzzles here are incredibly well planned out and their grand scale really do give Zelda games a run for their money in terms of quality. The perfect example of this is the first time you play as Tut, now transformed into a mummy, and you're confronted by multiple puzzle rooms that are all connected together immensely well to create one giant puzzle. If you lamented the loss of traditional Zelda dungeon puzzles in Breath of the Wild, then Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy will be refreshing for you on the Nintendo Switch. There'll be lots of pulling switches, platforming, shimmying across tight spaces and using ingenuity to solve puzzles at hand. What I immediately loved about this one was just how Tut is able to use his body as a way of doing things living people wouldn't be able to do. He can electrify himself or burn himself for a short time in order to change switches or set fire to wooden crates or barricades. It's comical but works well. It's just something out of the box and I really enjoyed that part. One of the primary things I did enjoy was that it does not hold your hand. While you're given little tutorials about the mechanics of the game, objectives and how to do them are left up to your own apprehension. It's not a particularly challenging game, but it was refreshing on those handful of occasions where it wasn't clear 
as to what to do next. The first instance of this was when I was in Abydos, where I was pretty much stumped as to where to go next after reaching the Grand Canal. I felt daft when it finally fell into place, but I think that's due to modern games being far too worried about letting gamers think for themselves. If you feel like being treated as a respectable adult, then again, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy will be refreshing for you. There's an interesting monster capturing ability which you'll get down the line, and this opens up a whole new set of skills for Sphinx. In a Pokemon-like sense, you can weaken an enemy and then unleash a capture bug to make them yours. Once you have them, you can use them in battle, donate them to a museum, or as you'll find out, some of them have special abilities that will help Sphinx in his exploration. The monsters that kind of act like bombs will obviously destroy weakened boulders. The fire armadillos will help burn wooden fences or crates that you couldn't otherwise access. The whole capturing and using thing isn't the smoothest implementation ever, as it can be a little finicky, but it was a mechanic that really took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting that going into it. Back in the day, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy passed me by. Despite being an avid gamer of 13 years old, I don't remember seeing this game at all. Maybe it didn't stand out on the store shelves to me, but I'm happy I got to play it after all this time. Mechanically, it's still very sound, and if it had a new coat of paint, you probably wouldn't be able to discern the difference between a more modern game and this one. It's action-adventure gaming at its most sincere, from another era, and one that this old man would say a better one. There's a reason that older classics like Spyro and Crash are coming back as well as Mario Odyssey, just expanding on an older Mario 64 formula. Sometimes the simple things can be better and even more obscure titles like Sphinx proved that for me, because it's not nostalgia because I haven't played this game before. I do like this gameplay quite a lot. It's simple, charming and satisfying. I'm curious to know, did you guys ever play Sphinx back in the day or did you even know about it back in 2003-2004? The soundtrack we have here is pretty good. I was impressed with the Egyptian style music that we generally hear with Egyptian themed media and it sets the mood very well. It felt very immersive and thought out. One of the biggest issues I have with Sphinx though is the lack of voice acting. As stated, there's a lot of talking in cutscenes because the story does have a big focus but no actual voices for the characters which is the true showing of its age. It makes the game feel cheaper overall and it does impact the story somewhat. I don't think it would have been too much of a stretch to add this for the re-release. Visually, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy hasn't changed a whole lot in the transition between standard definition and high definition. It definitely looks of its time, there's no doubt about that. Textures are rough and the lack of detail in certain areas is unappealing. It looks its age for sure, despite the widescreen and upped resolution. It's a shame new textures couldn't have been done, but I suspect that was a step in the budget too far. If looking in the options, you'll be surprised to see some customization in regards to the graphics. You can choose how far or close you want the camera angle to be from your character. I suspect this was an addition to the re-release, considering it's quite clear the game really wasn't made for the more extreme ends, especially when pulling out, which the camera becomes like a fish-eyed lens. You can also choose how much anisotropic filtering and multi-sampling you want, whatever those are. I'm not a PC player, so I have no idea what those things mean. And I turned them all onto the top and then to the bottom, and I didn't really notice any difference at all. Performance-wise, you're looking at 60 frames per second, which is pretty much what you would expect for such an old, visually unimpressive game. I believe it was completely flawless throughout my playtime, but I could be wrong. Maybe there's a little bit here and there, but nothing major. At $29.99 and £26.99, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy is ambitiously priced for a game that is like 16 years old. I know THQ Nordic are set in their ways with Switch pricing, but I think it should have been about $20 or £15. I know I recently mentioned in my Raven review, but you do have to look at the competition, and if Capcom are offering Okami for $20, then Nordic need to have a good old think about that. Saying that, if Nintendo released Wind Waker on the Switch tomorrow, I suppose I'd be more than happy to part with $60, that they'd no doubt slap on it. It's all about perspective. I think there is charming quality here, obviously not a proper Zelda level quality, but if you're looking for a similar type of game on a console bereft of them, I think it would be good value. If you're only somewhat curious, then definitely wait for a 30-40% to 40 sale. There is a physical copy which should lower the price in the coming months, and if you want to buy it, then consider purchasing through our Amazon shop in the link below. It's at no extra cost to you guys, and it does help support the Switch Watch team immensely. Before we get into my final thoughts, make sure you click that subscribe button and the like button to keep up to date with all our awesome Switch content. 
overall, if you're looking for a more traditional 3D Zelda-like game with lots of charm and solid time capsule gameplay, then Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy is a very solid option, despite the ambitious price. While it may not have aged well visually, the gameplay still holds up and I would suggest it's possibly from a better time in gaming. Maybe that's just me being nostalgic, but I never played this back in the day, yet I really enjoyed it and I think you will too. It's a shame about the visuals, lack of voice acting and the price, but there's a solid action game waiting for you right here. I thoroughly enjoyed playing through this for the first time 15 years after its initial release. A great 8 out of 10. Now Sphinx is more like a 3D Zelda style game, but if you're looking for a more of a 2D style, then head over to watch our review of Blossom Tales, a lovely little game that's well worth a look. I'll see you guys over there, take care.